Good morning, everybody. This is David Boven, your head of training at Kale Realty. And today we are going to be going over your first meeting with the landlord. So when you're first meeting a landlord, there are a couple of things that you want to do. Number one, you want to try and have the meeting at the property that's being listed. The reason being that you can build better rapport. So when you meet someone face to face, you can actually speak to them, get to know them, and maybe they have other vacancies that you could potentially get in on. You also get a feel for the home so that when you're running comps, you can make sure you price it correctly. And if it's vacant and ready to go, you can get pictures right away um, if you're prepared to do that. With a lot of people who do leasing, um, depending on the price point, if it's under $1,000, generally I will take photos myself. If it's over 1000 then I'll usually hire a photographer. But that's totally up to you. And some of you may be better at taking photos than others or have a professional style camera, things of that nature. So feel free to go there. Now, other reason that it's important to build good rapport with your client at this point is that landlords generally have more than one unit. They usually have multiple units and they're constantly looking to buy. So if you build that strong relationship with this landlord, you might be the agent that they use to purchase their next investment property. Second um, reason that it's very important to build a rapport is because landlords talk to other landlords. You're going to get referrals this way. And the same goes if things don't work in your favor. They're going to talk to other landlords in their neighborhood and let them know, hey, I didn't have such a great experience with this agent. So make sure that you build that rapport. Make sure that um, everything is in line and that you do everything correctly. So the first step is to do a walkthrough of the property, bring a notebook, uh, take notes if there's anything you recommend being done to the home or if there's anything you want to highlight in the remarks or get specific photos of. This also allows you to get a feel for the owner and to build more rapport. Second, you're going to sit down generally at the kitchen table or wherever they're comfortable and present your CMA docs. Explain the process, explain how you priced, okay? And explain the commission. So when you're talking about explaining the process and explaining the pricing, well, we'll start with the pricing. When you're talking pricing, it's kind of tough, right? To just show up and hope that <laughs> you've ran a CMA the correct way. But what I like to do is when I'm going to meet someone at a property that I haven't seen, I'll kind of run a few different styles of comps. So I'll do if it's in perfect condition, if it's rentable but not updated, or if it's, you know, needs some work. And that way I can let them know, hey, these are the different price points I think you fall into this category. Now, the process for handling a rental for a landlord and how you explain it is that you field all phone calls. So anytime someone calls and wants to see the property, you're going to get them scheduled or they're going to do it via the MLS, via their agent. You handle all applications getting submitted to the landlord. So through Kale, we can actually run the application. I believe it's 65 bucks per tenant that's over 18 years old. They'll go to our website and apply. That will get emailed to you, and then you can go over it with your landlord. You'll handle getting everything properly signed and handle the move into the property. And to do this, you charge one month's rent to be split with a co-broker if necessary. So if there is an agent on the other side, you will have to share commission on the MLS. Generally, it's half a month's rent minus whatever the back end fees are. But 
it's also possible because of all the syndication websites that your uh, client that rents the property is not represented. So if that happens, you'll get a uh, no agency signed with the client and you're good to go because we do not allow dual agency. Now, if you talk about management, so there are two different things, um, handling, finding someone to lease the property is the process we just went over. And then there's management. So as a manager, you would field all phone calls from the tenants. If there are any issues, you would coordinate with contractors or handymen. You would collect the rent. It would generally be sent to hail. You submit payment to the landlord. So you're going to AC edge them. And we can do this for you. Um, generally, you're going to charge a percentage. Personally, I charge 8%. We also have a sister company who does this for a flat fee. So if you personally want to get into managing properties, contact me and I can direct you on how we can figure it out and get an agreement. But if you're not going to be doing multiple properties, it's really not worth it. Um, if you send someone over to our sister company, we can give you some type of referral fee and we'll also allow you to handle the rental. So you'll make the commission on the rental and you'll get a, a little referral fee on the management, okay? So now that you've explained how the processes work, you're going to get the document signed, preferably digitally. So bring your laptop, bring your pad, have them have their computer prepared so that you can just get into that loop and get it done. You're going to discuss the showing process. So if it's vacant, um, this is generally just a lockbox type go and show. If it is not vacant, you're going to have to schedule with the tenant. So you're going to have a little bit more work. You're going to find out if it is not vacant, if a lockbox is okay, because maybe the tenants won't be comfortable with it, unfortunately, in which case you would have to meet everyone who wants to see it at the property. And also explain how the home should appear before any showings and that the owner should not be there. So as far as how the house should appear, the reason you need to bring this up generally is if it's not vacant so that they can let their tenants know, hey, this is how we want it to look. Generally, you want it to be cleaned up, right? You want there not to be mess on the floor or food cooking in the kitchen. Just uh, what I generally like to tell tenants is if you were going to see a property, make it look like you would want it to be if you were seeing it. And that kind of gets the point across. Now, if it's vacant, the main thing is just talking to the owner and telling them to let you know if they're going to be there so that um, you don't schedule any showings if they're doing some work or there's something going on that they're handling. As far as rebuttals go for these conversations, so another agent in the area has sold a lot of homes, so we're considering them. Um, the rebuttal for this generally is just you selling yourself. So for me, what I like to do is bring up the fact that I like to communicate. I'm going to follow up with you. I'm going to contact you. We're going to be in touch and I'm going to keep you completely abreast of what's going on. Other agents may not have that consideration. If they say your commission is too high. Generally, for me, one month's rent is a minimum. You absolutely have to get one month's rent because if you're splitting it with another agent, you're cutting it right in half, right? So now you're cutting your commission in half. They're getting a half month. It can get pretty low. So a month is just the, the standard. That's the way that, that it works. If they say they want to be at showings, you just want to let them know, hey, they need their privacy. If they're looking at a property, they want to be able to talk about it and feel free about what they're saying. If a landlord is at the 
showing, then they're not going to be comfortable. They're not going to talk freely with their agent and discuss things, which is always a negative. If they say they don't want a lockbox, you can offer to get a sentry lock. So what that does is they have to log in through the app or use their card. And it digitally lets us know every time someone enters the home. So it can be a little bit safer. But um, generally, lockboxes are safe. Okay, There's hundreds of thousands of properties for sale across the United States. And the majority of them have lockboxes. So can something happen? Of course, you never know. But if someone really wants to get into a house, whether there's a lockbox or not, they're going to make their way in. So lastly, you need to make sure that you have all of your clients' contact info so that you can get in touch with them. Make sure you have all the documents that you brought or have all digital signatures went through. If you're not taking photos that day, schedule a time. If it's not vacant, you're gonna have to get the tenants information so you can coordinate showings and photos and things like that and then ask if they have any final questions if there's anything else that you might be able to help with to make sure that this process goes as smooth as possible okay so really the the bottom line with this stuff is there are two different conversations you're going to have with the landlord Conversation one is for renting out the unit. Conversation two could potentially be about management. If you are not interested in managing on your own, you can always refer to our sister company and we would be happy to uh, help there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share.